you are here. So we'll just get straight into the message. John, uh, 1 John chapter 2, verses 12 to 14. 1 John chapter 2, verses 12 to 14. Let me read for you. It goes like this. I'm writing to you, dear children, because your sins have been forgiven on account of his name. I'm writing to you, fathers, because you know him who is from the beginning. I'm writing to you, young men, because you have overcome the evil one. I write to you, dear children, because you know the Father. I write to you, fathers, because you know him who is from the beginning. I write to you, young men, because you are strong and the word of God lives in you and you have overcome the evil one. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you, God, for your word. And we pray that as we listen to your word, that each one of us who are here, whatever stage of our spiritual lives, whatever stage of our physical growth as well, Lord, we pray that you will speak into our lives today. And Lord, that, that growth of God will happen. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, today I'll be talking about stages of growth. Now, growth is not something that happens automatically. It is a process. It happens over time with the right conditions, with the right input, um, and, and also when, 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 things, when uh, you have the right environment and the right input, then naturally growth happens. It's not something you can force. It's not like you can tell uh, a fruit tree. Fruit tree, bear fruit. And then it will bear fruit immediately like that. There are some things that happen before growth happens. It is a process. It can take time. Uh, uh, it, it takes, takes uh, nurturing and, and so on. And so it is similar for the human growth process. Human growth process. There are people here who are younger and then there are some who are older. Some who are still growing. Some you haven't reached your full growth potential. You are tall already, but you could grow two inches taller one day. Uh, those like William and me, we cannot grow taller. We probably can grow shorter. <laughs> With the wrong posture and, and, uh, and the brittle bones uh, when time comes. Uh. Yeah, you know, but every one of us are in different stages of growth in our life or different stage of our life as well. S uh, similarly, each one of us are at different stages of our spiritual growth. And so today, I, I want to speak mainly about spiritual growth, but there will be some analogy with the physical growth as well. Now, John the Apostle was writing, he is probably at a very advanced age, and uh, he is writing as a spiritual father to the, to the, to the disciples, the, the Christians that he's writing to. And he uses familiar language, f uh, family language, the language of children, my dear children, uh, the, and young men, you know, who will call somebody a young man? Of course, the older person will call somebody a young man. And he calls some others fathers. So there's this family language that's going on, children, young men, and fathers. And we'll see how this analogy uh, relates to our own spiritual walk as well. So we'll just get straight into it. There are three main um, levels of growth or stages of growth that are mentioned here. Uh, but it will cover uh, the whole spectrum, okay? So there is the children, children, dear children, and then there is young men, and then there is fathers. So these three, very, very straightforward, uh, very clear, uh, what do you call, outline of today's message. So first thing is children, children. Um, in this passage, actually, he, he goes by, by addressing all three, and then he repeats it again by, by adding a, a couple of other ideas as well. So let, let's take a look at it. He goes like this, I write, I'm, I'm writing to you, dear children, because your sins have been forgiven on account of his name. I write to you, dear children, because you know the Father. So it's talking about children. Talking about children. Now, um, everyone's life starts from infancy, infancy, then you grow to become children, and then adults, and then the, the more advanced in age. Okay, so start with children. So every one of us started there. Every one of us started there. And when we talk about spiritual children, it is not uh, those, only those who are 
new to the church. But what does spiritual children mean? Actually, spiritual children are those who have just begun their spiritual walk as believers in Jesus. Just begun their spiritual walk. And one clue that we can find actually from this passage, it says, because your sins have been forgiven on account of His name. This is where it all starts. It starts when we understand that we are sinners. We need forgiveness. We are helpless in our sins. And then what happens is that we ask God for forgiveness. We repent of our sins. We call on the name of Jesus. And the Lord forgives us our sins. It's all by faith. And then the next part, it says, uh, because you know the Father. And so once our relationship with God, the Father, has, uh, is restored, then we begin, we begin a relationship with the Father in heaven. And we start to know who the Father in heaven is. So this is the beginning of somebody's spiritual walk. Now, if you ask me exactly when I started to believe in Jesus, I can't give you an exact date. Because from infancy, I was baptized with water. I went for the Sunday school classes. But did I know uh, about salvation and forgiveness of sins? Somewhat. Did I pray the Lord's Prayer? Yes, every day, many, many times even. Uh, and, and Sundays, we would just recite it. But you know, when exactly did my spiritual walk start? Exactly, I, I don't really, really know. But for those who are adults who have come to faith, you can very clearly say that there, that there was one day when you confess with your lips that Jesus Christ is Lord. I've, that's where you accepted Jesus and you, uh, you, you said that sinner's prayer or the prayer of the, to believe in Jesus. So it could be that. But the main thing is, is this, is that whether you believe in Jesus, whether you have repented. Okay, so, uh, you know, babies, when they come into the world, babies, any of you remember being a baby? <laughs> so babies, uh, babies are new creations. When they come into the world, everything is like, wow, wow, sense of awe, colors. The baby is able to recognize black and white at first, black and white pictures. But later, more colors, it becomes more vivid, uh, red, green, blue, and, and, and the colors of the world. And then the baby can, can see even adults. And they look at adults, wow, this, this creature is so big. This person is so big. So babies, right? Um, other things, senses, they start to hear sounds, uh, start to make sense of music, appreciate music, textures, touching, everything is new. Some are rough, some are soft. Um, taste, some, some, some things are sweet. Babies or children love to, to test the world with their tongues, right? Sometimes putting even wrong things in their mouth. Smells, different smells. And all, all these things, there's a sense of wonder, new things, absorbing new things. Now, it's quite similar as well for new believers in Jesus. New believers in Jesus also have a sense of wonder. They, they learn a new truth and about God, and then suddenly they become so excited. Have you ever seen somebody accept Jesus? And you see the look on their face. Do they look like they're being forced? Do they look like a gun has been put on their head to believe in Jesus? Somebody who believes in Jesus, when they believe in Jesus, there's something that uh, a lot of times that I notice, joy. A joy. Joy. Because they have taken that step of faith to believe in Jesus. So there's joy. And there's also a sense of wonder. You know, you, you are walking on cloud nine, you go to work, everything is new. You look at things from a different perspective. God is in my life. When, when you pray suddenly uh, for, new, for parking in, in spring, you get the parking exactly where you want it and you praise the Lord. Uh, you pray for this and that. God answers, you pray for no rain, and then there's no rain. And, and, and God gives all this as an encouragement to that little child who has just come to faith in Him. There's this naivety in that relationship with God the Father. But there's also a warning for those who are uh, uh, spiritual infants, is that spiritual infants don't have discernment. Don't have discernment. Uh, just like children, like we say, <laughs> 
uh, they will be crawling, that baby uh, crawling, and then everything they want to test with the mouth. Not, not just taste, uh, but test with the mouth. <laughs> okay? So they test and they taste with the mouth. They put things like whatever they can find on the, on the floor. And that can be very, very dangerous. Now, likewise also for spiritual babies, uh, there is lack of discernment. There, uh, a lot of things that come in, they, they are not able to differentiate between right and wrong. It's just like, um, it, it's, it's just like the food that they, they take, they won't know whether it's poison or, or nutritious or junk food. Okay, so um, that's where the new believers need nurturing and help from those who are, who are around, uh, who, who are more mature. So what do babies need? Now, babies basically need this. They need milk. 1 Peter 2 verses 1 to 3. Um, it goes like this. Like newborn babies crave spiritual milk. If you are a new believer, and new believers are not just those who, are, um, who have just started to join the church. I was a new believer. I was a, a spiritual child when I first came to hope. But I have been uh, in a church for more than 20 years before this, before that, 22 years. I was 22 years old, but I was born into the church. Second month, I was already baptized. doesn't matter how long you were in a church, but whether you have already started your spiritual journey and whether you are growing. So I needed spiritual milk. My, uh, my leader at that time, the pastor, he said, I want to do lessons with you. I said, I know everything already. I've been in church for 20 over years. I went through all the lessons, all the, all the catechisms. I know everything. He said, no, 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 you just test it out. I will, I will do it with you. I can do it faster as well. I'll do express course with you. So uh, that, that's the way he convinced me. Okay, so I went in. From the first lesson, I realized that I actually don't know. <laughs> I didn't know. What is salvation? What is salvation? I didn't know it's by grace. I didn't know what is repentance. I didn't know what worship is. Worship is not just about singing songs. It's about a whole life of worship. You know, all these things. And one by one, every single week, he met up with me and, and he laid the foundations that were so important in my life. You need spiritual milk if you are new to the faith. You need it. You and I, we need it. And I'm not, we're not here to judge, you know, but these, these three levels, some of you say, oh, no, no, I'm already there. I'm already there. It's father, I'm already father. Really, maybe we are still at the child. I mean, not to judge anyone, but, but let's be realistic. Where we are spiritually, it's not about how many years we've been in Hope Church. It's about, it's more than that. In the lessons of salvation, forgiveness, the gospel, Jesus' sacrifice on the cross, and also the enemy. How do we face the enemy? Uh, baptism. I had to make a very a very tough decision on baptism because I was baptized as a child. I said, I've already done it before. But then the person told me, you know what baptism is? Baptism is, it is, is a public declaration of faith. As a baby, what declaration of faith were you doing? <laughs> were you saying that you follow Jesus as a baby? So, all this challenged my faith. We have a water baptism coming up 1st of May. Uh, especially for a blaze, there are quite a number. How many of, of them, Gladys? How many? Ten, around ten, ten ish, ten ish from a blaze at least, and a few others. Was that? <laughs> okay, more than ten. Yeah, okay, and uh, and also some adults. But if you have not been baptized in water, you've been coming to church many years. Maybe it's time to humble ourselves. Baptism is one of the first evidence of your faith in Jesus, that you obey Jesus. First step of obedience to follow Jesus. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The church need, we as a church, we need to obey that command to baptize. And if you're a believer, there is a command as well to be baptized. It's a first step of obedience. Um, and then we move on to solid food. Solid food. So after milk, there's solid food. Babies, after three months, six months, 
the parents will start after six months try to give some some food so soft food and so on and um, moving on to solid food we don't stay at with milk I love milk as well I drink milk every day some sort of milk and uh, milk with my coffee most of the time or tea but milk we don't stay at milk forever we need other nutrients and there are a lot of young believers who are not just given milk or solid food, what happens is that, okay, that they don't graduate to solid food. They don't even have milk. They have junk food. In the supermarkets, there are a lot of foods there that says nutritious uh, and, and so on, but actually those are just a scam. Because you look at the ingredients, how, how much percent? 100, gra oh, 100 grams, how many grams sugar? 30 grams sugar. Even the cereals uh, for the children are all junk food. Some of them, 50%. Oh, I might as well buy sugar and just eat the sugar directly. <laughs> right? But there are a lot of, 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 uh, of content that's out there. Some, of, some people say, I don't need to go to church. I don't need to, to, I can get everything on YouTube. I can get everything. A lot of content out there is junk food, brothers and sisters in Christ. A lot of content out there is junk food. All sweets saying, Jesus will answer all your prayers. He is that father that will give you all the gifts that you want and so on. It's junk food. It is it's not, uh, those are not lies necessarily. But those are half-truths because it only gives you the best part, the sweets. But actually the bitter part, the ones that actually will help you grow, is a lot of times omitted conveniently. Um, so don't skip these parts of the, the milk and then the solid food. Now, so the, the milk are those fundamentals that are very important. The ABCs in grammar. A lot of us, we, we complain that like this, my English could have been better if I had a better foundation of grammar. The damage has already been done. <laughs> a lot of us complain about it. Uh, that, that's, our, that's, our, that's Malaysia for you. Uh, those who play sports, for example, like if you play tennis or badminton, you never progress because you don't have the fundamentals, like how to grip the racket. And in fact, when you play badminton or you play some racket games, you play in the wrong way and then you injure yourself because you don't have the fundamentals. Likewise, in the Christian faith, we need to build the fundamentals strong. And if we have not, let's go back to the fundamentals. Go back. So it says like newborn babies. And Hebrews 5, uh, 5 verse 12 and 4. Um, you should be teachers by now. But you need somebody to teach you elementary truths of God's word all over again. You need milk, not solid food. So some people still need milk. Go and get the milk. But solid food is for the mature who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. Okay, so um, go and get solid food. We have um, some Next Steps Academy classes coming up. I think, William, you didn't mention this, but it was on the screen earlier on. So Next Steps Academy, uh, on the 6th of May, we have one on how to read the Bible. And then for those who are a bit more mature in the faith, 13th of May, we have on uh, Heart of Mentoring. Now, the format has changed a little because what we're doing is that we're doing 6th of May specifically only for study the Bible and 13th of May specifically for Heart of Mentoring. Uh, for those who are not online, uh, you, it's not going to be online. I mean, for those who are online now, it's not, it's not going to be online. It's going to be in person. So do sign up. You can come and join us as well. It will be at the space first floor. Okay, uh, so one way to grow is to come for the classes. Um, but of course, there are other ways, like go and get input of God's Word. Read God's Word. Um, look for your leader. Ask them to go through lessons with you. The lessons that I went through myself, um, even though I was a believer or was in the church for over 20 years, but never progressed. Now, the next thing is young men. Young men. Now, young men, it goes like, I'm writing to you, young men, because you have overcome the evil one. I write to you, young men, because you are strong and the word of God lives in you and you have overcome the evil one. How is somebody a strong believer? There are two things here, overcome 
and not, number two is the Word of God. These are prerequisites. If you don't have this, maybe you have not graduated uh, from children to young adults. So to become a full-grown adult is the goal of parents or is the call of parents. If you are a parent like me, our goal for our children is to nurture until they are fully grown and to release them. It's, it, it's not to hold them and keep them forever, but it's to, to, to nurture until they are fully adults um, and grow to maturity. How is a, a person mature as an adult? Uh, of course, they will be fully grown physically, but there's more than that. Maturity in decision-making, independence, how they make friends, how they choose friends, being able to go and make a living. For some people, you need to get a job. Some people, <laughs> young people, you need to get a job. Um, and no longer just depending on parents. So it's, it's all these things. And the young, a young person has proven himself, a young adult has proven himself, has proven himself capable. You know, I, I was just thinking of this. Sometimes I have these conversations with my daughter. And she asked me, ah, Daddy, when can I get my driver's license? <laughs> I said, I don't know. <laughs> when, when I was, uh, when I was, I, I, I think it was 16 years old at one time. I don't know. But now it's 17 years old. Or was it always 17 years old? I don't know. I can't remember. But uh, I checked it out just recently so I can answer her now. 17 years old. But can you imagine can you imagine, parents, would you give your Toyota to your 17-year-old daughter to drive? <laughs> <laughs> so that is a parent who has successfully raised a child that she can trust. Yeah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> would you... <laughs> When I was uh, 13 years old, I used to cycle to school. And I w today I wonder how my parents allowed me to cycle to school. <laughs> cycle to school as a 13-year-old. Uh, of course, in the process, we, we lost a few bicycles because people stole it and, and those things. Uh, we did have locks, but once in a while, it would get stolen anyhow. But uh, uh, children nowadays may be a bit too pampered and they are not able to, to, to be released into the world. Um, we were just talking about this, uh, about marriage, for example. I've just been in contact with some couples and, and, uh, and, and people who want to get married. Always, you know, we praise the Lord that in our church we have couples who, who just married uh, or, or thinking of getting married. But in marriage, you need to have two complete persons together. Two complete persons. You know, some parents, they are thinking, oh, I want, I want my son to be married to this woman so that she can take care of him. Wrong. <laughs> some, 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 some ladies think, oh, I want to marry this man so she can, he can take care of me. Wrong. <laughs> uh, don't speculate, okay? I, I don't know what they are. Uh, 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 yeah, yeah. Maybe they have an aha moment. <laughs> but... It's two adults who are full persons who are capable of taking care of themselves and they want to be united as one so the husband can take care of the wife, the wife can take care of the husband. Otherwise, it's going to be a parent-child dynamic where the, the man is the father and then the woman, the, the wife, is actually a daughter. Or the other way around, even worse. The husband is the son and the wife is the father, uh, mother. Oh, wow. It's frustrating, I tell you. Young people, that is something you need to uh, aim for. Be a fully functional adult. <laughs> okay, so, um, but when we talk about spiritual young men, spiritual young men, one evidence of somebody being a spiritual young man, or a youth, young man or young woman, is that he or she has overcome the evil one. Now, overcoming the evil one is not just about, about 
overcoming temptations, but it does include overcoming temptations, you become more and more mature where you are able to overcome one by one the bondages before you came to Christ. You had all these bondages, addictions, you had all these, all these things that are habitual sins, but now you, one by one you have overcome those sins and you become stronger and stronger. It includes that, but it's not by your own strength. We overcome the evil one by the blood of the Lamb through Jesus Christ our Lord. When you have faith in Jesus, depending on the Lord, the Lord helps you to overcome those sins. It's not by your own willpower. There are some people who are very moral, but they don't know Jesus Christ. So the main thing is that overcoming that. The moment you become a believer, you are already put into the war zone. You are in the war zone, a spiritual warfare with the evil one. In the Lord's Prayer, it even says, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. It's not just deliver us from evil, as if there are two forces, one good, one evil, but it's the evil one, the enemy, the devil himself. Overcoming the evil one. Um, so, a spiritual, we are in a spiritual warfare. We have tasted the milk, we have taken the milk with solid food, but we are already in a spiritual warfare. So how can young adults overcome? How, how have they overcome? How did they overcome in the first place? One clue is from here, it says, uh, it says they have the Word of God. The Word of God lives in you. Psalm 119 verse 9 and 11, how can a young man stay um, on the path of purity by living according to your word. I've hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. So it's knowing God, it's obeying God. Um, not the amount, the number of years or number of sermons you have heard, but whether you have obeyed what you have heard. Obeyed the Lord. And to be more and more like Jesus. Now, one way of knowing whether somebody is maturing as a believer, it's not so much of the output. Although output is important. Output means that they're serving. Serving in the Sunday service, serving the LG, uh, serving here, serving there. Always busy with, with, uh, with the ministry. Now, that is a very noble thing, a very good thing. And we should all be involved somehow. But that is not the main measure of one's spiritual maturity. The main measure is whether he or she has become more and more like Jesus. You have the character of Jesus. When words come out of our mouths, we all need to grow in this area, of course. I, I know myself. But when words come out of our mouths, it displays our maturity in Jesus, not our immaturity. When the decisions we make, you know, uh, in the areas of, of, uh, of overcoming can be found, for example, in the passage after verse 14, which 15 to 17, talk, talking about the love of the world, the love of the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. Um, whether we are loving the world more or we are loving God more in the decisions of our life, whether we, we, are, we are more gentle or we become more violent, whether, we have, uh, uh, whether our temper has become, become more, more under control or our temper we become more and more irritable and more, uh, more angry at people. So all these, these are displays that show us how mature a believer is. Not so much of how good they are in the ministry or how good we are in ministry or the words, the eloquence that we have or the skills that we have. It's about our character. Are we more and more like Jesus? Do we love others more and more? And so... Um, one area of, uh, I, I think, which is very, very important. Just the other day, I was uh, at a life group, yeah, a working adults life group. And in the working adults life group, they were sharing prayer points. And uh, I, I, I found it so, so, uh, so good that they were sharing with one another. Um, so some of them were, were sharing about in the workplace, they are facing some ethical issues. What if somebody offers you some... Uh, it's asking for favors, you know, kickbacks when you award them a, a project. 
uh, or, 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 or they award you a project and then you, you, you are the supplier and then uh, they ask for kickbacks, they ask for some, some, something in return. What do we do as believers? Um, health issues, they share about health issues, they share about desire to connect with, with people in their workplace so that they can be a sort and like. You know, the life group is a very, very good place where we can spur one another on, encourage one another on in our faith. Uh, and, uh, and, and, and with that, we can, we can grow, we can have accountability. We, we have our brothers and sisters to even correct us if we are wrong. Uh, just because you are older or longer in the faith, doesn't, you've, been lo- you've been in the faith longer, doesn't mean you're always right. Sometimes it even takes a younger person to, to correct us. Even as adults, we need to be humble. Don't think that we are, I'm 50 years old already. What does this 25-year-old know about life to be able to speak to my life that way? You know, maybe he or she has uh, something, some wisdom for us and God is using that person to speak to us. Right? So, it's about humility and, and it proves our humility if we listen and we, and we consider it and it proves that we are really an adult in the Lord. So these are some things. Um, have input of God's word. Let God's word dwell in our hearts. It's not so much of how much of God's word we have, although spirit, uh, God's word input in our life is very, very important. We need to have Bible knowledge. But it's also about how much we have been obeying. So we know about baptism, but we've not been baptized. We know about, uh, we know about the fruit of the spirit, but we don't really display the fruit of the Spirit, and, and so on. Now, the third thing is this, fathers. Uh, th- this is the, the third one. And it, it goes like this. You know him who is from the beginning. You know him who is from the beginning. I write to you, fathers, because you know him who is from the beginning. Now, babies, when they come into the world, they know their parents. They know the mother. They know the father. Sometimes, even, uh, even, even when the baby comes out of the womb, they hear the mother or father's voice. There's one, there's one somebody who said this, a doctor. Uh, the, the, father, the father's voice, and then the child would turn because the, the child actually recognizes the father's voice. Okay, so babies know the father. Spiritual babies know the father as well. And spiritual fathers know the father as well. In the beginning, a baby knows the father or the mother. As one of the first adults, or the first adults they come into contact with who nurtures them and loves them. But, uh, you know, when we grow older, some of us have, have uh, known our own fathers very well. And they have not just become uh, father as a provider, but you as an adult, your father becomes like a friend, somebody that you can relate with, can talk with, can, can joke with. Uh, and, 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 and that's where there's knowing of the Father. There's a full circle of relationship where there's, there's more spiritual depth. Earlier on, it's just about everything is new. But then there's so much spiritual depth about it, more intimacy, a richer relationship with God the Father as you have walked with the Lord for many, many years. It says from the beginning, God has never changed. God has never changed. It's just that we have changed and we are still changing. But he who is from the beginning has never changed. God the Father has never changed. And, and with that, as you have walked with the Lord for a long time, you become mature yourself. You become, and spiritual fathers are very important and mothers are very important. Who, you are the pillars of the church. And um, you have the experience, you have been walking with the Lord you have seen that He has been good. And knowing God as a good, good God is not just about having our prayers answered according to how we want it. But over the years, we realize that maybe God didn't answer the way I prayed so that I can be where I am today. It's just like those who go to the gym, you know, muscles. Uh, if you want to have comfortable time all the time, your muscles will never develop and you never have the body that you are looking for, <laughs> right? <laughs> Uh, so we need to go through that suffering that tough times and spiritual fathers and mothers have gone through that victoriously 
maybe the healing didn't come according to how uh, you wanted it, but, but you have grown so much after that, and now you can help others. God has helped you through, and, and so on. And um, this is where my encouragement is, is that if you have already graduated from being an adult, and being, of course, we never graduate, right? Uh, we are still, we are still uh, fighting the spiritual battle. But can any of us say that we were ready when the child was born? You as the first, uh, your first child was born, if you are a parent today. Those who are, pa- those who are parents, would you have been able to say, I'm ready to become a father or mother? No, right? But once a child comes out, suddenly your, all the things you have learned have to be put into practice. Every single bit of wisdom that you have gained from even your own parents and the world and, uh, and walking with the Lord, you have to put into practice to nurture this little one. How wonderful would it be if we could also have that same mentality and same burden for believers in Jesus, the young believers who come into the church, those who are yet to come to the Lord as well. A father and mother, we naturally, even the people of the world, it says that which father, if the child asks for something good, you give something bad. Ask for egg, you give a snake instead of an egg to the child and then laugh, ha ha ha, it's a snake. <laughs> which father would do that? Maybe, yeah, insane kind of father, but normal fathers will not, or mothers will not do that. So likewise, in the house of God as well, how wonderful it would be if we have already come to that stage of being young adults, young men, young women, overcome the world, having God's word in in us. How wonderful it would be if we could also uh, have that burden for those who are within the church who need that spiritual nurturing. Let's see the passage here. Uh, 1 Corinthians 4 verse 15 says this, Even if you had 10,000 guardians in Christ, you do not have many fathers. Where are the spiritual fathers and mothers? Where are the spiritual mothers and fathers? Perhaps the Lord is speaking to our life today. Rise up. Rise up. My son, my daughter, I brought you thus far. Would you have that burden to nurture the younger ones? And a lot of people are complaining, oh, you my leader like this, my leader like that, or the leaders are like this, like that. It could mean that, if, you know, if we keep complaining like that, it could mean that we are still at the spiritual children level. <laughs> we hope that, oh, I want more spiritual milk. Give me more spiritual milk. Give me more solid food. But if you become a parent, your thinking changes from becoming a dependent to becoming somebody that somebody can depend on and nurture them and release them. Okay, so these are some things on, on spiritual growth and uh, we can talk a lot about all these things but I, I think we have enough to work, work on. For those who are young in the faith, go for the milk. You need milk. Don't skip that stage because that milk will help you grow uh, and there's no condemnation to start all over again if you realize that you don't have that milk. Solid food. Solid food. Go for the solid food if you already had milk. But don't stay there. Move on to other things. Aim to become a young adult. Those who are young adults already, maybe you're still struggling with some things. I want to, to, to uh, give you an encouragement. Isaiah 40 verse 31 says, Even youths grow weary, tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar with wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. So some of us here are at that stage of of giving up. You feel tired. You feel, I've already fought so many, but how long more, Lord? Hope in the Lord. The Lord will renew your strength. Amen? And those who are spiritual parents of, can be fathers or, uh, you were there before, but maybe today you feel you need a bit of encouragement. The Lord wants to encourage you. Continue to do what you're doing. Maybe you need to initiate, initiate some relationships. Initiate some relationships. Nurture and then release them once they're 
mature enough. Amen? And those who are parents as well, I think this really speaks into our lives too, that uh, our goal is to release eventually. Release. Release. And let, let the children eventually become adults. Nurture them up to a level that they can. Okay? So let's all rise together. Lots of things to think about today. Lots of things. But the Lord is in the process. The Father ha- is the same yesterday, today and forever. Think of the heroes of the past. God w- was with them. God is with us even now. And the Lord, God has given His only Son, Jesus, to be a sacrifice for us so that you and I can overcome the evil one. Let's pray, let's pray. Father, bless those who are new to the faith. And we pray, oh God, for those oh God, who are new to the faith. Spiritual milk, spiritual food. Help them to grow, oh God. Father, those who are young, in the, uh, young men, oh God, those who are strong, they've overcome the world. May the word of the Lord dwell richly in our hearts that we have hidden the word in our hearts that we will not sin against you and Lord for those who are spiritual spiritually mature oh God to be ready oh God to nurture and care for those who are new to the faith thank you so much oh God uh, for parents who are here bless parents that the grace of God will be with each one oh God as they continue to nurture the young ones those who are grand- grandparents as well, Lord, that you will bless them as grandparents and those who are concerned for the children who are already adults, that you will also give them peace, oh God, and, and give them wisdom what to do, oh God. Thank you, God, for each one. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, we pray for spiritual growth for everyone who's here. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen, amen. <laughs>